Welcome to the session, uh, running a modern Java EE server in containers inside Kubernetes. Uh, let me introduce the speakers. So we have Antonio Nappi from CERN, Dave Cabelas from Container Engine for Kubernetes, and myself, Monica Riccelli, uh, WebLogic Server Product Management Team. Um, Safe Harbor, some of the material that I will cover are futures roadmap, so um, I'm Oracle legal, it makes me have this Safe Harbor statement. Um, so we've been seeing a trend uh, in our customers where they want to run their applications in microserver, uh, in microservices, in serverless, private and public clouds, uh, containers, inside of orchestration frameworks such as Kubernetes. Um, so the WebLogic team uh, has reacted to that customer demand and uh, so that we can run WebLogic in a cloud neutral infrastructure uh, to integrate. So we have developed integration with uh, tools and services that are native to this cloud platform and evolve WebLogic for these environments. So the building blocks behind our effort are, the first thing we did was we certified our WebLogic images on, um, on Docker. We provide samples. Uh, the team has written a um, group of blogs that cover uh, best practices, examples, documentation, to make it easy for you to uh, try it out and to, you know, any aspect that is important, we go ahead and document it in a blog. So the how-to is an index blog that has a link to all the different blogs that we have written. And then we have uh, provided value add integration by developing uh, these utilities. They're all open sourced. So uh, we want contribution from the field. We want you guys to try it. We want uh, to support our customers to evolve WebLogic to run in these kinds of environments. So the utilities that we have developed, we developed uh, what we call the WebLogic Kubernetes operator. So the operator is a standard Kubernetes operator that helps manage the WebLogic domain in Kubernetes. So it standardizes, it makes sure that uh, all the Kubernetes resources uh, on behalf of the domain are created and it helps with auto scaling. Um, so the whole management of the WebLogic domain from deployment to uh, runtime. We also developed what we call a monitoring exporter uh, so the monitoring exporter allows us to export WebLogic metrics from the WebLogic servers, runtime metrics, that can be then uh, you know, uh, displayed in Prometheus and Grafana. You still have the ability to monitor WebLogic with all the tools that you do today. You can go to the console, you can use REST APIs, you can do WLST. Um, to look at, you know, to monitor the WebLogic server uh, instances running. We also develop what we call the deploy tooling. The deploy tooling is a tool that allows you to uh, migrate a WebLogic domain that might be running on premise to Kubernetes or to an Im a Docker image. And I will be uh, covering each one in much more detail. Some operations that the WebLogic Kubernetes operator does is uh, it will create RBAC roles for uh, obtaining authorization to start, stop, restart. You know, you don't want anybody restarting uh, servers, so you want to create roles so that you can authorize certain users to do those kinds of operations. It can create a domain. It will create the persistent volume where our logs can be persisted, where their, the domain home will be persisted, as well as your application binaries. Uh, it will monitor the WebLogic servers with a liveness probe and a readiness probe. 
So uh, the operator looks at the lively, liveness probe to see the health of the servers running, and if it sees that one is unhealthy, it will invoke the appropriate Kubernetes API to, for that pod to be restarted. The readiness probe is because you, you might have a managed server that's up and an application deployed but not ready to receive traffic. So um, the objective of the readiness probe is when that server is ready to receive traffic, then it will open traffic uh, for the load balancer to come into the application. It can start stop instances, scale up, scale down, do auto scaling of the domain of the cluster, the WebLogic cluster, and then do a rolling restart when you patch or upgrade your applications. So let me go through the flow of how this environment works. So uh, users would uh, put their WebLogic binary image and their operator image in a local repository in uh, the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, put the credentials for the admin server in Kubernetes secrets. It then would provide some operator uh, inputs in a YAML file, things like what is the namespace where this operator will run? Um, for example, what domains is it going to manage? Because we can have one operator can manage many domains that are either in the same namespace or many different namespaces, and you can have one or many operators running in the same Kubernetes cluster. So you need to tell the operator what domains it's going to manage. Um, so once that's done, then we provide a script um, to start the operator. Then uh, the users will uh, provide some inputs for the domain itself. So we don't want to reproduce the whole configuration XML, but there is some information that is required in order to start that domain. Things like what is the admin port? What is the image? that these containers are going to be run from? Um, what is the namespace that the domain is going to run? Uh, we provide now also a unique identifier for the domain. So every Kubernetes resource that is created in the Kubernetes cluster is decorated with that domain UID. That's what tells the operator, OK, uh, these are all the services and resources that it needs to administer. It also gives us the ability to have different domains with the exact same name and configuration, but that are unique by domain UID, okay? So you might want to have, for example, the same domain in a namespace that you use for development, and then you have another namespace in the same cluster for testing, and your domains are both domain one, domain one, but the domain UID makes them unique. Um, the other thing, uh, so then, uh, we provide a script that starts a Kubernetes job, and what that Kubernetes job does is it creates a persistent volume where the logs are going to be persisted. It creates the WebLogic domain in that persistent volume and where you will put your application binaries. The Kubernetes job also creates a domain custom resource. So uh, Kubernetes, I don't know how many of you know about uh, Kubernetes uh, custom resources, but it just extends the Kubernetes APIs on behalf of that domain so that Kubernetes can do operations on the domain. Um, so once that domain resource is created, the operator will be observing that domain resource, and as soon as it sees that it's created, it will stand up the WebLogic domain. If you make changes to the domain resource, for example, let's say you say, well, I really only want two managed servers in my cluster started. Could be a cluster of, this is a WebLogic cluster, of five servers, but I only want two started. So in the domain resource, there is a, re under the cluster, there is a replica count that indicates how many managed servers you want running. So the operator will see that there are two replicas and will start two pods with two managed servers. If you now, if the user now goes, because the user can do kubectl commands to also administer or do operations on that WebLogic domain. So if uh, you change the replica count in the domain resource to say now three, 
then the operator will see that the replica count changed and it will invoke the right Kubernetes API to start another pod in the cluster. Other ways that we can also auto scale is uh, you can use the WebLogic um, diagnostic framework where you set rules that are uh, looking at metrics when the rule is met then that will invoke a REST call to the operator REST endpoint, and that will invoke the right Kubernetes API to scale the WebLogic cluster. Because we have also uh, provided an ex the exporter to export WebLogic metrics to Prometheus, in Prometheus, you can also set a rule that when it's met, will also invoke a REST call on the operator, and then that will create a scaling action. The same way as you scale, you can also shrink. So this is uh, other things that the operator does also is, for example, manage all the services to make sure that load balancers are, um, so it creates the right cluster IP so that if you add servers, you scale up, the, um, the, the load balancer can load traffic, you know, route traffic to the servers that have been added or scaled in the cluster. This is a point where I would have showed you the, <laughs> the custom resource and how we can do scaling and shrinking, but unfortunately, I'm so sorry, um, can't show you. But I will post a video in, uh, in YouTube, so be in the lookout, and then you can see the, the same or more. Um, so again, the monitor exporter is a utility, it's open source, you can find it in GitHub. So all these things you can, because they're open source, we have GitHub projects for them. So you can go to GitHub, Oracle, WebLogic, Kubernetes operator and see all the code there, all the documentation in the readme. You can clone. We have also the operator image is in the Docker Hub, so you can pull, pull directly from the Docker Hub. Our WebLogic images are in the Docker store and the Oracle container registry, so you can pull those as well. The monitoring exporter has a project as well in GitHub called the WebLogic monitoring exporter. So the job of the monitoring exporter, again, is uh, it, the monitoring exporter would export the metrics from every, it doesn't go to the admin server, it actually goes directly to the managed servers to export the runtime metrics from those servers. And then those can be read in Prometheus, and as I described before, you can set rules in Prometheus uh, to scale, to shrink. You can also you know, have beautiful Grafana dashboards that monitor the WebLogic server. So that is uh, an additional way to monitor uh, WebLogic in this kind of platform. And we see that our customers that, or our users that are interested in using cloud native or cloud neutral would use these kind of tools to monitor, right? So we are providing integration with those tools. The deploying tool, there's also a GitHub project for the WebLogic deploy tooling. So the WebLogic deploy tooling, what it does is it introspects a WebLogic domain configuration. So it can be, can go all the way from 10.3.6 all the way to 12.2.1.3, which is our latest version of WebLogic. It creates a model of that domain inside of a YAML. Then you can go and modify certain aspects of that configuration. Let's say you say, well, I want one less data source, or I want, uh, I don't know, an extra JMS queue. You can go and and change that configuration inside of the YAML, and then migrate that, you know, with the WebLogic deploy tooling, have that domain configuration in, inside of a persistent volume or inside of a, a Docker image. So it makes it very simple to move, to migrate configurations that might be on-premise to this environment. Um, you can also do validation. So we ourselves, inside of the Kubernetes project, want to do validations of your configuration because there are certain things, right, certain configurations, for example, uh, node manager or server migration. These are things that we would not do in Kubernetes or that we don't support in Kubernetes. So 
uh, it will do validation on that uh, configuration so that you, know, you won't have problems once you instantiate or deploy the WebLogic domain. We uh, have developed a sample in the Docker GitHub um, that shows you how to create a WebLogic domain using the deploy tooling inside of a Docker container. So go ahead and see, it's very simple and uh, it makes it much faster. So this is our roadmap. So uh, in our initial, um, uh, in our first version of the operator, we decided to put the domain home inside of a persistent volume. And the reasons why we did that is because we thought that would be an easier lift and shift for our customers to take a domain that was running uh, inside, you know, on premise to a persistent volume. Also, it allows for dynamic configuration changes, upgrades to your applications without having to create new images. But as we have worked with more and more customers, we have realized that the expectation in this environment is that they want a domain that is captured inside of an image that is completely portable, that you can run it on-premise, you can move it, the same image can be moved in the cloud, and we constantly are certifying with our uh, OKE uh, to make sure that you know, these environments uh, run well. And we have seen that you know, the, the domain and image is really makes it uh, portable. It improves support for CI, CD deployment. So we are trying to integrate with the tools that we offer on OCI and OKE to make sure that you, know, you make a change, uh, you put it through a pipeline, a new image gets pushed into the registry, and then you know, immediately the operator will react and in a rolling fashion uh, deploy the WebLogic domain with a new updated image. Um, we will provide, because the image is immutable, the configuration when you create that WebLogic domain is completely immutable, but to make that image portable between environments, so between uh, development, testing, and production, you, for example, might want to connect to a different database, right? So we will provide overrides to that configuration so you can change tunables, max number of connections, min number of connections in your data source, or maybe the URL in the data source to connect to a different database. So that will make your uh, image, your domain, completely portable. It's perfect for HA. It's perfect for DR situations. It makes it so much easier to move between different environments. Um, we will provide help charts um, to start the operator and load balancers. So uh, our initial model used scripts, but we found that with these scripts were very complex. Um, it would introduce usability issues when uh, people wanted to make changes to the way that they deployed things. So uh, we said, okay, let's not have these complex scripts. Let's make it simple. Let's use Helm for this. So uh, we provided Helm charts. We are developing what we call the WebLogic logging exporter. And what the logging exporter does is it exports the WebLogic mm. server logs and sends them directly to the Elastic Stack. So what this does is it makes the having to persist the logs into a persistent volume completely optional. When you have customers that require persistent, then they can rewrite the logs to persistent volume. But if they want to use tools like the Elastic Stack, they can send those logs directly there. And then that, if you, know, if you take away the, the dependency on a persistent volume, then your image is really portable. You don't have to do backups. You have everything contained inside of that image. And then at the end, uh, to address requirements, uh, for example, when we worked with uh, Antonio from CERN, one of the requirements is, I want a, control, a finer control of the life cycle of the WebLogic servers running. So right now you can, you know, through the operator, you can shut down a whole cluster or you can shut down the domain, but we didn't provide the ability to shut down managed server two or say, okay, I want to uh, do a rolling restart. You know, I have done um, some configuration change and I want to do a rolling restart of my domain. So we are providing 
uh, operator rest endpoints to control those life cycle operations. Um, I think now it's your turn, Dave. Thanks, Monica. All right. <clears throat> So the idea of this slide is, you know, why Kubernetes, and what we saw with, um, with, you know, the adoption of containers, it was really like a huge onslaught of, of customer demand saying we want to put everything we can in containers. How many people are running containerized applications today? How many people are using Kubernetes to orchestrate? Good. Good stuff, right? So, so what you heard from Monica was really like, how do we evolve, you know, the application server to, to fit into this world? And it's, it's, you know, it's twofold, right? It's, it's, um, what do we need to kind of make it work within there, and then what do we need to change within WebLogic to make it work well? So, really cool stuff coming there. I'm going to jump ahead just a little bit and talk about um, what Oracle offers for. Um, I'm going to keep. I want to keep moving here. So, from uh, from a Kubernetes perspective. Um, Oracle really offers a whole spectrum of, of you know, platforms here. So um, on the far left, it's a bit of a roll your own. You know, if you're looking to, to set up a Kubernetes cluster um, as part of the Oracle Linux offering, um, there's a, a real simplified script that uses Kube ADM to roll out either you know, um, Kubernetes masters or Kubernetes worker nodes that you can join to a cluster. Um, so again, on-prem, you can use it on OCI, you can use it wherever you want. The middle box here is uh, a Terraform installer. We, have, we provide that for uh, use on OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Uh, so the, the Gen 2 cloud that we've been hearing a bit about over the last couple of days um, really, again, make it, makes it really easy to get something up and rolling. Um, and then on the far right, really, that's the jewel I want to talk about today, which is um, Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes, or we shorten it to OKE for short. Um, the idea there is it's a, a fully managed service. You you come into Oracle com, uh, Container, sorry, Oracle Cloud, and say, I need to, I need some compute. Give me that. Now I just I need a Kubernetes cluster. We spin it up for you, and then you can just deploy your applications using Kube Control or Kube Cuddle, or whatever, however you want to pronounce that. Some internal debate on that, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more. Uh, some two levels of details here. So first level is um, we also provide a registry. So and it's a fully Docker, uh, Docker 2 compliant registry um, that runs in Oracle's tenancy, as does the, the control uh, plane for any Kubernetes clusters as part of OKE, right? So what does that mean? It means like you're not paying anything extra for these, these services, right? Um, the only thing you pay for is storage for the registry. So, you know, depending on what images you store, how big they are, how many you store, that's really what you pay for, and storage is pretty cheap. And then uh, for Kubernetes, for OKE, um, the, the masters, uh, the master plane runs in Oracle's tenancy, so you don't pay for those VMs, you don't pay for that compute at all. The only thing you pay for is the stuff that runs in your tenancy, which is uh, the worker nodes. Um, and, you know, Oracle, you know, as, as you would imagine, Oracle is really meant to be uh, an, an enterprise cloud, right? So that means, you know, by default, we create um, a highly available control plane for you. We spread it across availability domains in a region, right? And we also run the etcd service within that, within those availability domain um, instances. So again, th three, three ADs, so three nodes in your etcd cluster. We back that up on a regular basis, so you can also recover if there's any, any issues there. Um, and then, you know, you have full control over where you want to run your worker nodes, right, and how many you want to run. You, you know, you tell us, okay, what are, what are the subnets where you want this to run? And then, you know, we make sure we set up worker nodes within those subnets. If you set them in only one availability domain in a region, then that's where we'll run the cluster for you. Uh, but otherwise, it's, you know, typically, and by default, it's across all of the availability domains for you. And so what's the, you know, what's the, the idea there? It really is, again, HA by default, and then high performance by default. I mean, this runs in OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, which is, you know, um, can run on bare metal or VM shapes. Um, when I see, you know, customers do um, performance testing against, you know, our cloud versus other clouds, and what we're seeing is some pretty dramatic results uh, with, you know, in favor of Oracle. So good stuff there. Um, I do want to be a little quick here because we want to hear mostly from Antonio. Um, we're going to upload these slides, and it kind of runs through the, you know, what are the features, advantages, benefits here. Uh, but gen in general, it's, you know, 
we want to make things easy. We want to provide all the good things that you get from a, a Kubernetes world, right? So you want isolation, you want portability of your, of your applications, you want the availability and reliability that you're going to get from Oracle Cloud, and then we want to minimize that, you know, the, the, the overhead around um, having to manage this. <clears throat> Coming down the pike, um, so not only is it, you know, Oracle Container um, Registry and then uh, OKE, it's, you know, building the next level of, of infrastructure here, making it so that we've got an end-to-end, -end, you know, policy management, authentication, authorization service, um, a marketplace integration, so you can easily add things into your, into your um, Kubernetes cluster, um, integration with a, um, uh, an Elk and um, Prometheus service, right, a monitoring and, and telemetry service, and then service brokers based on open service broker API. So the idea that there is um, you can then easily integrate with other cloud services that are running, like let's say you're running autonomous transaction processing and you want your applications to integrate with that, well, you use service brokers to create those connections to that service. Could be, you know, event broker service, whatever you need. So this is, this is um, what's coming next. Um, so without further ado, I actually want to turn it over to Antonio to talk about his experience with uh, some of the stuff we've been talking about here. Thank you, David. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, before to start to talk about WebLogic and Kubernetes, let me introduce a bit about uh, the CERN, for whom uh, does not know. CERN is the um, European Organization for Nuclear Research. Uh, founded in 1954 from uh, 12 uh, uh, European countries uh, in order to promote uh, uh, the peace through the science. Uh, we host now at CERN around 10,000 scientists uh, all around the, the, the world. In particular, I think we have uh, more than 100 uh, different uh, uh, nationality, nationality at CERN. Uh, what we do at CERN, we basically study fundamental particles and how they interact in order to understand which are the fundamental laws of the nature. Uh, to do this, CERN uh, built a large hadron collider that is the largest uh, uh, particle collider in the world. It is long uh, 27 kilometers, it is built underground and um, it's made by thousands of magnets that are used basically to uh, accelerate and uh, um, give the direction to the particle beam and uh, also CERN is the place where the web was born. Uh, Tim Berns was there when he invented the, the web and uh, in this context in 2001 uh, was born Open Lab that is a private slash public uh, uh, partnership between ICT companies and CERN. Basically uh, what we do in this is that uh, Open Lab want to promote uh, new technologies, uh, working with uh, the biggest ICT companies, um, and also test and evaluate uh, technology of the partners in order to give feedback and the suggestions. And we usually agree on the projects that are both useful for us and for, for them. Uh, now let's pass to the WebLogic at CERN. Um, this is a we run uh, since, I think, eight years at CERN WebLogic in production. Uh, now we are at uh, 12.1.3 version. And basically, our users are all developers that uh, work for different fields. So engineering, IT, administrator. We also saw many CERN Java critical applications. Uh, all the system was pretty solid, robust. Uh, we did not have any big problem in the past. But we were spending a lot of time in maintenance tasks. So we were, were looking for a technology that could help us to improve this and to focus more on the application side to add features for our users. So that's why we started to have a look to Kubernetes. And now we are basically providing, for the moment, is a pilot service for our users where they can test uh, WebLogic on Kubernetes. Um, we hope to, for the end of this year, to, to move all the dev environment to Kubernetes, and the next year we will move the production. And basically, what we do is creating uh, Docker images with with, uh, with WebLogic uh, that we after uh, run on the Kubernetes cluster. Let me explain you why we did this. Um, first things, all the environment related to Kubernetes and containers world are immutable. So basically, what we do is basically define the WebLogic domain inside the Docker image. Uh, and this makes all the process easy to track. Because before, we were having uh, some managed server 
we, uh, where we were running some uh, Jiton script to configure it. So sometimes uh, someone was forgetting to, uh, add, uh, to run that script on some particular mach uh, machine and so on. With this way, um, everything is the same everywhere. So you don't have any more this problem. Uh, it makes all our deployment of Oblogic more portable uh, because we can run this on-premise without problem. We run this also in the cloud, on the CI in particular, and open us uh, new doors. In fact, we started to evaluate a disaster recovery plan for our service because before was not the case since we had too many dependencies on our environment. So if something happens, we will ab be able to move to the cloud uh, in a few hours, we hope. Second, uh, third, it is auto -ailing. Um Problem is that uh, if a container crash, it will be automatically restart uh, from Kubernetes without any human interaction. And also we had the problem usually with the managed server in VMs that at some point they were getting uh, stuck. So you did not notice until the user were co was contacting you and say, look, I cannot reach this server. Uh, with the Liveness Probe in Kubernetes, you can basically check the status and automatically restart uh, the, the pod without basically downtime and uh, uh, without human interaction. This was pretty cool. Of course, all this process allow us to get deployment faster. So basically, we are able to, to spawn up a WebLogic cluster once we define the Docker image. In few minutes, uh, you run the script, and in two, three minutes, you have a WebLogic cluster with an application running on top of it. I mean, since we, it was take, taking us at least half a day to, to basically create a new cluster, this is a big uh, improvement for us, and of course, improve our productivity and uh, efficiency. I think also Kubernetes uh, helped a lot us to improve our CI CD um, pipelines. In fact, our uh, uh, deployment cycles are shorter than the past. And these are some tools that we are using and we are planning to use for the future. In particular, we use GitLab to automatically generate our uh, Docker images and also to store them. We use Elm to package and uh, install um, WebLogic clusters. And we are planning to use uh, Scaffold and Kaniko, uh, in particular to help our uh, um, developers in order to allow them to just uh, take care of the code, uh, commit a change, and in a few seconds they will have a, a a dev environment running on Kubernetes where they can test uh, the, their software. And this is probably, I mean, it's something that we are planning to, to provide to our users. So in this context of Apple Lab, I've been testing the operator uh, from Monica team. These are some my, uh, my opinion about the, the product. First, what I like was the fact that it uh, was open source. Sometimes, you know, put uh, Oracle and open source in the same sentence is, uh, is a bit strange, but in this case, this, in this case well, I really appreciate it. In fact, also the way they are interacting with the community, I think, is uh, show how the, uh, the company is changing uh, their way to, to behave. In fact, in the, I like a lot the LK integration because also it's something that we are using for our login system. I think the operator make the deployment much easier and also faster. Uh, and I like the fact that you can basically have the domain in a Kubernetes resource and you just change this resource and you, uh, the domain will be automatically updated. Of course, the operator is, uh, is portable. I run it uh, on-premise because we have a private cloud at CERN and also on the OCI. And the last things, but not the least, I really like the WebLogic deploying tool because to configure the WebLogic, usually we are running uh, some Jiton script. It was taking a while. But now, with this uh, tool, you basically define a YAML file, you run the script, and in a few seconds, you have a domain. And uh, it saves a lot of uh, time and also uh, is less prone to, to errors. What I don't like of this project is that uh, it is tied too much to the persistent storage. We prefer to m put the domain configuration inside Docker images because it, it makes it less, uh, more portable. Instead, uh, with persistent storage, I, I think they are less. And also does not support older version than the 12.2.1 since we are still running with the 12.1.3. Uh, these are some things that I would like that the operator could do. For example, first, uh, I would like that uh, uh, they 
there will be some REST API to which our user can interact and do some operation like start, stop uh, a particular pod and also to get authenticated from uh, this REST API. This is why, because we wanted our user uh, to interact with the Kubernetes cluster, but not allow them to, in, to use kubectl. Just to, to interact with the REST API is enough. Uh, because they don't need to know that infrastructure behind us change. So for them, we are providing web logic. It doesn't matter if we are providing this in Kubernetes or on VMs. They don't, they don't should not care about that. And also that the, the storage dependency disappear because I think if you remove this, uh, it's more, the, the concept is more closer to the container world. Uh, move to Kubernetes is you not know, something that uh, is really straightforward. It takes a while in particular because you need to change your mentality. First, uh, there is no, you cannot rely, rely anymore on IPs, host name. Uh, there is no, everything is volatile. Uh, when you restart a pod, you lose everything. So for logging, monitoring, this is a challenge. Uh, how we do this, for example, we started to implement uh, ILK stack for the logging inside containers. And also for the monitoring, we implemented the TIG, Telegraph, Influx, and Grafana. And uh, we put all the configuration inside Docker images. Uh, to conclude, I want to say that uh, we are extremely happy about running web logic on Kubernetes because we gain a lot in terms of productivity and efficiency. And also our developers are happy to, to and excited to try these new technologies. We are ready for production. Kubernetes is a standard de facto and uh, it's pretty stable and robust. I think the operator for the room are not uh, yet uh, move to Kubernetes is pretty good to start uh, to plan to move to Kubernetes. Uh, and I want to say that uh, the collaboration with, with uh, Oracle and with Monica and David was pretty, pretty, really uh, fruitful because um, we were giving them feedback about the product uh, and we saw that they were really uh, uh, heard us. Uh, we saw the, the product change direction uh, following our suggestion. At the same time, we learned new things. For example, I remember once I had the problem with the, the integration of the TT protocol inside Kubernetes. Thanks to the uh, developers and the uh, Monica team, I managed to, to insert this in the Kubernetes. This was amazing. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions. So thanks everybody. We are pretty much at the end. I just I did want to kind of throw this up there as, you know, what what if we put a bow on this presentation today? It's you think of it as Oracle's committed to this container native development world. Um, we've we've got some pieces out there of a platform. We're going to continue to do that. Um, we're committed in the sense of you take products like WebLogic and we're providing the things that make it work well and evolving the product itself to work in these things and then. Um, we see real world usage stuff like the guys from CERN who are here and saying, hey, you know, like we try it out, we know it's working, we're giving good feedback to the product teams and uh, making this stuff work well. So um, I think we can take questions outside. That's probably the best thing because we are already a couple minutes over. Thank you all for coming and I uh, apologize for uh, the technical difficulties.